How's it going ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. In this video, we take an in-depth look at over 20 new iOS 13 features from dark mode to new photos app improvements, to sign in with Apple, to privacy enhancements, and much more. If you're new to iOS 13, prepare thyself for some awesomeness. 9to5Mac on YouTube is sponsored by Tenorshare's Reboot. Have you ever found your iPhone stuck on an Apple logo like this? Not only can Tenorshare's Reboot fix this problem, but it can also do a whole lot more. Simply connect your iOS device to your Mac and instantly gain access to awesome features like the ability to enter or exit recovery mode with a single click like this. That feature by itself seems cool enough, but with Reboot, you gain access to a whole bunch of other repair features as well. Reboot can help you fix all sorts of problems with your iPhone and recover your iOS installation to normal without data loss. It can even help you downgrade from an iOS beta like this. Click the link in the description for more details and special thanks to Reboot for sponsoring 9to5Mac. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is what we've been waiting for. iOS 13 is here. We're gonna start off with dark mode, of course, the flagship feature of iOS 13. Now to enable dark mode, you just go into settings, display and brightness, and there under the appearance section, you just tap on dark, and there we go. We have a new dark mode enabled. You saw the dark settings app. Now you see the darker wallpaper. We can go back in here, switch back to light mode like that, and you could see the settings app goes back to light and you get your light wallpaper as well. Now that's not the only way to enable or disable dark mode. You can also do so via a control center shortcut. So you just tap this little toggle here and that quickly switches you between light and dark mode just like that. Super simple, super easy. So you see the dark wallpaper there and now you see the light wallpaper. But of course that isn't the only way. You can also use Siri so you can just ask Turn on dark mode and dark mode enables just like that. And of course you can do the opposite. You can say turn off dark mode like this and dark mode is disabled. So there are lots of ways you can enable or disable dark mode. Now with iOS 13, you get four new wallpapers and these, as you can see, are special because they have both a light and a dark mode built right into the wallpaper. So we switch to the blue, you saw light mode. Here is dark mode for the blue wallpaper. And again, there is light mode. Here's our green light mode and dark mode. Switch back to light. Almost, <laughs> there we go, there's light. And then here's my favorite new wallpaper, the, the black wallpaper. You saw light mode, there's dark mode. I think it looks fantastic with those colored icons. All right, but here's something very interesting. Even if you don't use one of those four special wallpapers, you can still take advantage of dark mode to a certain degree. You can now dim wallpaper when dark mode is enabled. So all you need to do is enable that little switch and watch what happens. I'm gonna ask Siri to go ahead and enable dark mode. Now see how it dims? Just like that. You see the, uh, the dock at the bottom also goes dark as well like it normally does. But the point is you can dim any wallpaper, even if it's not one of the four special wallpapers. Now here's what's really cool about dark mode, how it affects apps. So you see the reminders app, a really beautiful dark mode for reminders. Here's dark mode for notes. And again, these are all built in applications. Switch back to light mode, open up the calendar. Let's switch to dark mode. You see that beautiful dark interface on your calendar. And dark mode really shows its greatness whenever you're using your iPhone in a dimly lit environment or in a dark environment, it's gonna be a lot easier on your eyes because you don't have that bright white light shining directly into your eyes. Uh, so dark mode definitely has its practical applications besides just looking cool. But it also works with third party apps as well for those developers that have updated their apps of course to support dark mode. One such app is Chibi Studio. We also have pCalc, which is my favorite calculator app on iOS, and it looks beautiful in that dark interface. You have other apps like Carrot Weather that support dark mode or Fantastical. Card Hop also supports dark mode. And you have Tripsy, and there's gonna be tons of apps available in the App Store that support dark mode. iOS 12 already had great performance, but iOS 13 claims to have even better performance. 
For instance, launching apps is supposed to be faster on iOS 13. And I found that to be mostly true, although it's hard to measure exactly in this non-scientific test here, but just launching apps, they do seem to be a little bit faster on iOS 13, which is on the right, versus iOS 12 on the left. But again, I mean, to be fair, to be honest, it is a little difficult to accurately measure launch times when I'm just holding both iPhones in my hand and tapping the apps to launch the apps. But I've used both extensively side by side and I will definitely say that iOS 13 does seem a little bit faster to launch applications. And even if it's just a few milliseconds faster, that does add up over time. All right, but let's talk about something I definitely noticed and that's faster face ID unlock iOS 13 is definitely faster to unlock your iPhone with Face ID. So I have both devices here, power them up. You can see iOS 13 on the right unlocks faster than iOS 12 on the left. Again, it's not a massive difference, but it's a difference nonetheless. What do you guys think? With iOS 13, you gain access to three new Animoji characters, starting with the mouse, the octopus, and the cow. And just like every other Animoji, this uses the true depth camera on your iPhone to track your face movements, your expressions, and relay those expressions directly to the, to the character on screen. Uh, but you also have new features for Memoji as well. So you have things like freckles, additional hairstyles. See lots and lots of hairstyles here. But you also have additional things like, for instance, uh, eyelashes. So new eyelashes, see all those right there. But it doesn't stop there. There's additional features as well, such as piercings. So different types of piercings you'll find. And you get some really cool accessories for the ears. If you scroll all the way down, you'll notice right there, that's right, you're not seeing things. You can add AirPods to your Memoji characters as well. But iOS 13 takes it a step further when it comes to Animoji and Memoji. So if you tap this button here, you gain access to Memoji and Animoji stickers. So I can drag and drop any of the stickers directly on a message, or I can simply tap a sticker to add it to the conversation, just like that. But again, it's not just Memoji stickers, it's also Animoji stickers. You have access to all the Animoji in sticker form. And as you can see, all of the stickers share the same common expressions across all the characters. So whether it be a lion or a panda or a chicken, they're all gonna have those same expressions available to you. But here's what's really neat about Memoji and Animoji stickers. You can access them outside of the Messages app. Yes, simply open up the Emoji keyboard. So even in the Notes app, I can access my Memoji stickers and that includes Animoji as well. So I simply tap on one of them and that adds it to the document just like that. If you tap the ellipsis button, you gain access to the other characters. So I can cycle through choose my dinosaur, tap on it like that, add it to the document. What do you guys think? Do you plan on using Animoji stickers on a regular basis? Let me know down below in the comments. Thanks to a completely software generated voice, Siri now sounds more natural in iOS 13. Let's compare. Here's iOS 13. I forget the first three, but there's a fourth. A smart machine shall first consider which is more worth its while to perform the given task or instead to figure some way out of it. And here's iOS 12. I forget the first three, but there's a fourth. A smart machine shall first consider which is more worth its while to perform the given task, or instead, to figure some way out. iOS 13 definitely sounds less robotic for long responses. Now another cool feature you'll find in iOS 13 is Siri Kit for audio. So now you can ask Siri to play music, podcasts, audiobooks, and it works with third-party apps. So Pandora has been updated, so I can say play Radiohead on Pandora, and it starts playing just like that. And if you own a HomePod, you'll be able to use Siri Kit for audio on your HomePod speaker. As usual, Apple is on top of its game when it comes to privacy. So in iOS 13, you now have more granular control over your location sharing. You'll find a handy new setting that will force apps to ask you each time 
it wants to request your location. So that ask next time option is brand new to iOS 13. So this handy setting makes it so that you can give permission to an app to use your location only during a single session. iOS 13 also makes it easier for users to see when apps use your location information in the background. And it'll actually show you where it used your location and you can quickly change the location permissions for that particular app directly from that notification. So I'm gonna launch the camera app. It's gonna request my location. And in this instance, I'm just gonna say, hey, just use it this one time. So allow once, really, really cool new feature in iOS 13. And here's yet another privacy oriented feature in iOS 13. Now, when you're sharing photos that contain your location information, you can strip that location information out of the photo prior to you sharing. And in the past, unfortunately, some apps use Bluetooth for the wrong reasons. They use it to track you. Well, now in iOS 13, you can easily block Bluetooth access, although some apps legitimately need Bluetooth, not all of them do. So basically Bluetooth was being used as a sneaky way to track your location without actually having access to your location data. So unless an app is solely involved with transmitting audio over Bluetooth, it will have to request permission in iOS 13. Sign in with Apple is basically Apple's privacy focused take on all the Facebook and Google logins that you see on the web and in apps. Sign in with Apple is secure. It doesn't track you. In fact, as you'll see from the splash screen that appears, not only is it fast and easy, you can use Face ID to quickly authenticate, but it respects your privacy. Apps can only ask for your name and your email and Apple will never track you. You can even go as far as to hide your email and keep your email address private, but thanks to Apple's private relay servers, you can still receive messages from the application or the service. So here you can see I have my name and I can go in there and edit that name if I want to do so. We'll just keep it as is. And then I can choose whether or not I want to share my email address or hide my email address. I'm going to choose hide, then tap continue and authenticate with face ID and that's it. I'm signed in with Apple. So being signed into Kayak allows me to go in and you know book flights or whatever the case may be, book a car rental. And sign in with Apple makes it all super easy and painless. So I'm going to log out here. I'm going to relaunch the app. I'm going to log back in. It recognizes that you signed in before. You just tap continue, verify with Face ID, and it logs you in just like that. Now we've waited patiently. Yes, we've waited for years for this, the volume HUD that appears in the middle of the screen, blocks content, and just is overall annoying. We've waited years for that to go away. It finally does in iOS 13. Now you see the volume indicator, the volume HUD, right there on the left side of the display, right next to the volume buttons. You can actually control it with your finger as well, just by sliding up or down like that. And notice how discreet it is, how it just simply hides away like that. This is the way the volume HUD should have been from the get-go, but better late than never, right? And to go along with that, the silent mode indicator is also now relocated. Now it's at the top of the display, nice and discreetly out of the way. And in iOS 13, you now have swipe functionality on the stock keyboard, so you don't have to download any sort of third-party keyboard to swipe to spell words like this. Let me show you. So you simply just swipe like that, subscribed, yet. So this is a new feature in iOS 13. It is called Quick Path, and it allows you to quickly swipe or tap right there on your keyboard. So I can tap to spell words and you swipe interchangeably thanks to Quick Path. Now in iOS 12 and earlier editions, when you wanted to move your cursor in a text field, you would tap and hold like this, you get the little magnifying glass and then you would position your cursor. That's all good, but in iOS 13, it's a lot better. Now you have direct cursor manipulation. You can move the cursor right to your desired spot. You simply tap and drag the cursor, just like that, no magnifying glass to deal with. Now here's another really big feature for iOS 13. On the left side, you see iOS 12, you tap the download button, nothing happens, it just sort of sits there, or you get an error message. But in iOS 13, you tap download here, and it prompts you to download the file. Here, in this case, an IPSW firmware file. So Safari has a built-in download manager. You just tap a button there and you can see your current in-progress downloads and previous downloads. 
So you can see it's not going too fast there, but that's okay. We'll just wait. If you tap the little magnifying glass, it'll take you to the download folder in the files app. You can configure that directly from Safari settings here in the settings app. So right now by default, iCloud Drive downloads folder, but you can also save it locally if you want to as well or in other places. What do you guys think? Are you happy to finally have real download capability in Safari? Let me know. The Reminders app in iOS 12 and below, you can see it right here. It's just downright terrible. I mean, let's just be honest. iOS 13's Reminders app is so much better here. At the top, you have your smart list, which makes it easy to find reminders that meet specific criteria. For instance, reminders that have a schedule automatically get filtered into the schedule smart list. All of your flagged reminders will appear under the flag smart list. Your today reminders contain all the reminders that maybe are past due or are currently due. And you have your all as well if you want to just access all of your all of your items across all available lists. Now speaking of lists, the reminders app allows you to create your own list. You can give it its own special color, give it its own name, and give it its own avatar. So I'll choose orange here and we will choose this little guy right here. So there we go, personal. All right, so let's go into the personal list and let's create some reminders here. So I'm just gonna tap new reminder and we can start adding some items. So in this one, I'm gonna say go grocery shopping and you can use the new quick toolbar to easily add specific parameters to that item. So I can say that is due tomorrow. I can give it a location, I can flag it. I can even add attachments like photos or scans. And I can go in the detail view in the inspector and add additional things. For instance, I can even make it remind me when I message someone about this particular reminder. All right, so we have the initial reminder. Let's go ahead and add a new one. So you can just press return and continue to add additional ones. All right, so one of the things that I really like about reminders is that you can easily create subtasks. So if I drag and drop butter on top of grocery shopping, it becomes a subtask. Or you can also just swipe to the right to indent and make subtask that way. And then you can minimize if you wish to. And it just helps you stay organized. But you can also take it a step further. You can group together multiple lists. So I'll give it the group name. And now I have two lists under a single group, which helps me to stay organized. I really like the Reminders app in iOS 13. The new Find My app is a combination of Find My Friends and Find My iPhone. Well, it actually explains it here on the little splash screen. So two apps become one. You have location updates and you have offline finding, which can use another Apple device and detect your device's Bluetooth signal and report it to location. So you can see at the bottom of the interface, you have your people tab, and that's gonna find all your people, formerly find my friends. And then you have your devices tab, and that's gonna find all your devices, formerly find my iPhone. And it's all neatly combined into a single interface. The music app gets a new coat of paint in iOS 13, specifically with the now playing interface, which I think looks amazing. Particularly the artist name and song title, how they are left justified. I think it just looks great in this interface. And then you have the up next interface as well. And that's where you'll find the shuffle and repeat buttons hidden away. And you'll find more controls underneath the options ellipsis. But the real big feature here with the music app is actually lyrics. Yes, lyrics that are time synced that you can follow along. You can karaoke if you want to. And notice as the song plays, the lyrics automatically scroll. You can actually even scroll and tap on lyrics to jump directly to that part of the song and it'll do so seamlessly. And alongside the release of iOS 13 comes a new map for the Maps app, rebuilt from the ground up with brand new features like more realistic details on roads, parks, buildings, beaches, etc. Now the updated maps are only available in select cities right now, but should be rolling out across the United States by the end of 2019 and arriving in other countries in 2020. But by far the coolest new iOS 13 related maps feature is this right here. And this is called Look Around. It is basically Apple's answer to Google Street View. And it's very impressive. I was actually really impressed with how well this worked in iOS 13. So this gives you a 360 degree view of your environment in select locations right now. So you can navigate around, you can make it even full screen as you navigate around in 3D. 
And you can even tap on storefronts and learn more about the businesses that you encounter. Notice how smooth that scrolling is as you move through the city. It is really smooth, certainly less herky-jerky than you find on Google Street View. So again, tapping on one of the locations gives you information about that business, which is handy. So you can get phone numbers, you get menus, directions, photos, and just look how smooth that is, butter smooth. And when you're not in full screen mode, you can use a little indicator on screen right here to help you navigate around the map. And as you rotate, the little indicator rotates along with you so you can see exactly what direction you're pointed in so you can find those all important landmarks. Okay, so the biggest new feature in iOS 13 is without a doubt, the new Photos app. And it makes sense given how camera centric the new iPhones are. Here in the Photos app, you'll notice the Photos tab and you have all photos, you have days, months, years. So under the days view, which is the default view, you're presented with the most relevant photos. It's going to omit duplicates, screenshots, things of that nature. And you'll also see your videos and your photos playback in stream. Now let's go ahead and tap the all photos tab here and that will display all your photos. Notice some of the screenshots are there or maybe some pictures that photos deems unimportant. Uh, those will be hidden in the all photos tab. Now you can also use pinch gestures to zoom in or out to view more or less photos. And then you can always just tap the days, months, or years view to zoom back out. Now there are other subtle new features in the Photos app, but really the biggest new feature is the ability to edit in a way that you've never been able to edit before. So we're gonna choose this photo here. We're gonna tap where it says edit in the upper right hand corner. And here is the editing interface. Now the really cool thing is that you get all these effects. Many of these effects are new, New effects include vibrance, white balance, sharpen, definition, noise reduction, and vignette. Uh, so you'll find all that as you scroll through this list. But the really cool thing is that you can adjust the intensity of each of these effects one by one. So for every effect, you can adjust the intensity and really customize your edit to a very granular degree. And you can also easily enable or disable effects on the fly just by tapping like that. So that turns it off, that turns it back on. So this functionality allows the editor to really key in on a specific look, making your photos look exactly like you want them. And here's another cool new iOS 13 feature. You can now zoom into the photo and continue editing so you can really see up close and personal how the various effects are affecting your image in the way it looks. So when I zoom in on the center of the flower, I can say, hey, that's a little bit too much saturation. I don't think I like that too much, so let's turn it off. Uh, but really, you get the point. It is just all about fine grain control. Now, it doesn't stop there. You also have all your filters but again, new in iOS 13 is the ability to adjust the intensity of each of these filters. So again, fine green control is the name of the game. Now I've sped this up a little bit so we can get through this, but as you can see there, you can flip, you can rotate your images, you can easily perform distortions. And again, one tap turns those features on or off. And you can change the aspect ratio right there on the fly, either in portrait or in landscape view. So we're finished with this image, but let's really crank it up here. Let's turn it up and let me show you something incredible. So in iOS 12 on the left, when you try to edit a photo, this is all you get. All you could do is trim the photo. That's pretty much it. And that's nice. Don't get me wrong. The ability to trim a video is, is good, but that's, pretty much all you got. And even when you did that, you had to save as a new clip. Well, prepare to have your mind blown because in iOS 13, editing videos works almost exactly like editing photos. So of course you can go in and trim your video like this, but notice at the bottom of the interface, you have all those tools. You can of course turn your sound on or off. You have all those tools there at the bottom here, just like photos. So you can go in, change up all your effects just like a photograph. You can even zoom in to the video and change all those effects just like you could with the photo. It is incredible. You change the intensity, turn them on or off. Now with the iPhone 11 and 11 Pro, you have incredible video camera capabilities. And for the first time, 
the software end of the spectrum lives up to the hardware end, and they joined forces together to create this, this spectacular final product on both the software and hardware end. So you saw where I'm able to, to adjust filters just like I could with photos, and then I can, of course, adjust the aspect ratio. I can flip, I can rotate, I can change it to portrait or landscape, and I can scroll through and play back just to see what it looks like. But here's the thing, when I tap done, notice it doesn't prompt me to save a new clip. No, it saves to a database the changes to that video and I can play it back with those changes in tow. And when sharing media via AirDrop, you'll notice a new option that allows you to keep all the photo data intact. That means that when a recipient receives your photo, they'll receive it in original quality, they'll have all your edit history so they can go back in and make changes, and all the metadata will be retained as well. That's a really powerful feature for collaborators. And unlike video editing on iOS 12 and below, your video edits are non-destructive in iOS 13. That means you can go back in and make changes to your edits at any time. Again, that is super powerful. Okay, so let's talk about new camera features. For starters, there's a new portrait lighting effect in portrait mode, and you'll find it at the very end here. It's called High Key Light Mono. This mode creates a beautiful classic look with a monochromatic subject on a white background. Now, I couldn't take one here in this demonstration, but I already took one. Oh, oh that's not very flattering. Okay, um, well, that's how it looks. Obviously, it'll look much better with your face there and not that face. Okay, so let's talk about another new iOS 13 feature. It's also portrait mode related here. Of course, in iOS 12, you could adjust the aperture in post. You could also adjust what portrait lighting effect was applied uh, like this. So you can switch between the different effects. But in iOS 13, you can actually adjust the portrait lighting intensity. And this basically increases the intensity of each portrait lighting effect, moving light closer to the subject or moving the light away from the subject. And you can adjust the intensity for any of the portrait lighting effects in portrait mode. And while this was shown off as an iPhone 11 Pro feature, older devices like the iPhone XS will be able to use multiple cameras at the same time in iOS 13. So you can do things like this, have both the front facing camera and the rear facing camera running at the same time, capturing data at the same time. Now, although I think the new cut, copy, paste, undo and redo gestures are more iPad centric, you can still perform them on your iPhone with three fingers, just like you can on the iPad. So you can pinch in with three fingers to copy, pinch in again to cut, pinch out to paste. You can perform an undo gesture by swiping to the left with three fingers and redo swiping to the right with three fingers. Obviously this will be better on the larger iPad screen, but you can still do so right here on iOS 13. In iOS 13, you'll find a redesigned share sheet. So here's iOS 12 on the left, iOS 13 on the right. You'll notice immediately that you have those quick share shortcuts. So you have people there with their names and faces. You just tap and share super easily. And this updates intelligently to show the most recent contacts or contacts that things you may want to share with based on what you're sharing. For instance, if a certain person's in a photo, it's going to suggest you share it with that person first. And then you have your airdrop section. So this has a dedicated panel for airdrop. So this is where you'll find all the airdrop capable devices around you. And you'll also notice a redesign actions menu with favorites at the top. Then you have your app specific actions and then all other actions below that. The home app gets a redesign and some upgrades as well, with the most obvious difference being the refresh home app accessory controls. So you can see the controls are updated there on iOS 13 on the right. Here's the thermostat, obviously looks much more like a thermostat here on the right when compared to how it used to look on iOS 12. You also notice some brand new yet subtle animations with the home app tiles when enabling or disabling devices. And the camera interface has been updated as well in iOS 13. Now it's possible to quickly switch between different cameras right there from the camera interface, which is really nice. And you can also access any other accessories in the particular room where your camera is configured. You couldn't do that in iOS 12. Now, of course, there'll be more home app related updates to come like HomeKit secure video coming in a future update, HomeKit routers, etc. So stay tuned for that. We'll have more. 
And of course, we couldn't forget about Apple Arcade, which is a big new feature that, that is multi-platform within Apple's ecosystem. Of course, it's here with iOS 13. There are tons of games. There will be over 100 different games that you'll be able to play with this once it's fully fleshed out, all for one low price of $4.99 a month. And I've been playing Apple Arcade for the last day and a half, and I have to say, I'm super impressed with the quality of content that is here on Apple Arcade, even at this early stage in the game. Here's one of my favorite titles on Apple Arcade called What the Golf. The best way I can describe this game, it's just a very irreverent take on the game of golf in general. In this game, literally anything can qualify as a golf ball. It is just so much fun and crazy. What I really love about Apple Arcade, besides the quality of the titles, is the price. For five bucks a month, you can even share it with the rest of your family members. This is a no-brainer in my opinion. What do you guys think? Will you be subscribing to Apple Arcade? Let me know down below in the comments section. And another reason that Apple Arcade is so cool is because you now have Xbox and PlayStation 4 controller support built right into iOS 13. So this is a big deal obviously because a lot of people already have Xbox and PlayStation 4 controllers and it gives you the best way to control your iOS games outside of native touch enabled games. So here you can see with my Xbox controller, I am playing one of my favorite Apple Arcade titles, Hexaflip with the controller, even though it's possible to play this game perfectly fine with touch. Okay, so let's take a brief second to talk about a few mill app updates. The first thing you're gonna notice here is this brand new format bar. And that gives way to this right here, desktop class text formatting within the mill app in iOS 13. So you can see, you can change the font, you can change, of course, font weight, italicize, all the normal stuff, but you can also go in and change colors via handy color palette. You can, of course, indent, outdent, you can bullet and create an ordered list or numerical list. And the format bar also allows you to insert attachments, photos, documents, even scans. You can, of course, draw and use markup right within the mill app, insert your drawing, just like that. And then folks, the files app gets some significant enhancements in iOS 13. So you can get info on files and find the metadata related to those files, especially handy for images. So you can find out what lens was used, what aperture, all that goodness. And then you can go in and you can also connect to an SMB server directly from the files app. So I'm gonna do so right now. And this is just a Synology NAS that I have on my network. So I'm gonna connect and authenticate. And there we go. So we're connected to our Synology NAS wirelessly right from iOS 13's files app. So I like to store all my, my videos that I've done. I store them here for safekeeping. Unfortunately, these videos are extremely large and I'm running over a slow network. Uh, so you're not gonna be able to actually see the video playback during this video because it's just gonna take too long. But the fact that you can connect to an external server is awesome. So my friends, that has been a look at 20 plus new iOS 13 features. Which one is your favorite? Let me know down below in the comments section. Also, don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you appreciated it. And also, extra special thanks to our sponsor, Tenorshare, makers of Reboot. If you need to repair your iOS device, maybe you're stuck in a boot loop or you're stuck in recovery mode, then Reboot can help you out. Be sure to click the link in the description for more details on where to get Reboot today. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.